The Isovox Solution is the mobile recording studio for singers, producers and recording artists, helping you achieve professional and consistent sounding audio anywhere you want. Literally anywhere you want. This might just be the final ingredient that you're looking for to take your music productions to the next level. Hi, I'm Ed from edthorne.com, here to help you make the most out of your home studios, and we've all struggled with recording in bad sounding rooms. The sound of a room does make a fundamental difference to the audio. This is more commonly associated with drums and guitars, but is particularly problematic for vocals, which are the most fundamental part of any production and can suffer the most from bad room acoustics. Yes, there are intelligent plugins that can filter out unwanted background noises and resonance, but ultimately you're still jeopardizing the audio, and why would you want to do that? The Isovox booth gives you a reflection-free, acoustically controlled environment to capture clean, crisp, high-quality vocal recordings, saving you loads of time in the editing process. The booth assembles in minutes, fits into a suitcase, it's lightweight, and it saves you from purchasing costly room treatment that you can't move from location to location, making it the perfect travel companion. Isovox have also sent me their ISO mic, which interestingly has a triangular shaped diaphragm, the likes of which I have never seen before. So we're going to be listening to that and putting that through its paces today as well. Let's unbox this bad boy, see how it works, and more importantly, see how it feels and sounds. All right, the Isovox microphone and the Isovox isolation booth. This is the Isovox mic. Warnings and instructions. All right, we have a very smart looking box with a random hole in the front to let the air out, to pull it out like a drawer. All right, this feels like a good quality box. Well presented and the microphone, this is surprisingly light actually. Reasonably sturdy grill. I'm guessing that's aluminium. The frame seems um, solid enough though. Isovox, very neatly engraved and you can see the triangle diaphragm. This I'm interested to hear. I can see the diaphragm has a, maybe a 10 mil pop filter on front of it already inside the mic casing. I like that. And then we've got the additional external pop filter. It's a really small size, I like that. I'm gonna hazard a guess, this comes off. And then I'm assuming that goes on there like so. Screw this back on. Note I haven't read any instructions. Typical man. As for where this goes, so this bit needs to be at the front. Quick twist round, undo this plate. Yes, in it goes like that. And that seems like a reasonably optimal space between the first pop filter and the internal one. And here we have our mounting system for the internals. And I'm guessing Isovox probably wanted me to put this on first so I don't risk dropping the mic. Sorry guys, I didn't do that. However, easily slotted on. Ah, that's cool. All right, so in the drumming world, a lot of the um, the DW cymbal stands have this system where you can pull this out and adjust the angle from which you tighten the, the bolt. And I believe Sonar cymbal stands have it as well. That's really good. All right, microphone assembled. Let's put that aside and get into the main event. Loads of instructions. Nicely labeled isovox, I like that. I guess this is some kind of base plate. So that's two walls in one. Nicely labeled. This is bigger than I thought it was gonna be. And something, I'm guessing this is the top actually. With the multiple sides, front and back. Big piece of foam. What is this? Big piece of foam. Might need the instructions after all. Woo. That's a whole lot of packaging. Question is, do we follow the instructions? May as well. How to install the product by Ed Thorne. Featuring Isovox by Isovox. Place the base plate D with the metal thread hole away from you. So that needs to be the other way around. Take these off. I mean, why they don't come joined together, I don't quite understand. And then we zip that in. And 
my fingers all the way up and over there. In we go. All the way down. This is huge. This is way bigger than I thought it would be. And they've sent us a gravity stand. <laughs> that is a smart white stand with um, very black bits. And now for the fun bit. I'm gonna go for that high. This is a complete guess. Whoa. Pick up the ice there, Vox. And on it goes. As easy as that. It's so big. And that's maybe a little bit high. It's very secure, it fits well. All right, let's go in. Hey, one, two, one, two. Definitely has a deadening effect immediately. I'm slightly concerned about the amount of noise that's coming up through here, but we'll test this properly in a little while. Next thing is to fit in the microphone, and I'm curious to know what that's for. Missed a bit of the instructions. <laughs> it's a mic clip, but I don't need that because I've got the ISOVOX microphone. And as far as I can tell, that is it for setting this up. Relatively straightforward, actually. It's very bulky. Everything's quite lightweight. It's just taken me a few minutes as you've seen it. Let's hear how it sounds. To test the ISO Vox booth and the microphone a little further, we're gonna A-B the audio outside the booth and inside the booth. As I said earlier, my studio's been designed for drumming, so it's reasonably dead, but it's not perfectly dead for voiceovers and vocals. To help with the comparison, we're also gonna compare it against another condenser mic, which is gonna be the Jay-Z V67. Now, if you've watched the channel before, you'll know that this is my favorite mic of all time. It is comparable to a Neumann U87. The detail and clarity are definitely comparable. This mic has a slight character to it, which I prefer on my voice, but it's a great microphone. Now, the interesting difference is, this is a cylindrical diaphragm from and the isovox mic has a triangular diaphragm which i've never heard of before so i'm interested to hear how that sounds already i can tell you that it's a very sensitive microphone i've got this running at just 15 decibels through my apollo x6 audio interface which is not much gain for a condenser mic which suggests that it's very sensitive and therefore should be incredibly detailed so let's test a couple of phrases and some clapping free drum loops at edthorne.com and we'll quickly swap mics so now you're listening to the Jay-Z microphone, and just to make this a very scientific test, to eliminate any chances of variation in proximity effect, I have measured the distance between my mouth and the microphone capsules with a hand span. How much more scientific could you want? Because the ISOVOX has a pop filter inside the diaphragm and also a removable external pop filter, I've put my k and double layered pop filter in front of the Jay-Z mic. There's a link for this in the description below. It's a really good pop filter. I use k and stands as well. So let's go back to the phrases, which will A-B in a second. Just checking. Free drum loops at edthorne.com. Free drum loops at edthorne.com. What I should say here is to get a similar input level into Logic is I've had to use an extra 20 decibels of input gain with the Jay-Z mic, which really says just how sensitive the ISOVOX microphone is. Let's compare those in a second, and then we'll do the same test inside the ISOVOX booth, and then we'll listen to some singing as well. As you can see, it's a big box. Let's go inside and see how it feels inside. Whoa. Hello. Ooh, instantly more dead. You can hear that straight away, can't you? Uh, all right, I got my GoPro at the top. Squeeze into this small space. Where's my iPad? And a bit of jiggling about. And there is plenty of space for my iPad. Cool. It's snug. It's cozy. Uh, it's, it's, it's warm. Inside the booth, I've got the Isovox microphone set up at 15 decibels of gain again. Now, something I want to test is the shock mounting system because I've noticed with the Jay-Z V67, it's very sensitive to stand vibrations and vibrations if you hit the ISO booth, which is very easy to do. I'm quite animated when I sing, so I've had to learn to stand still in position. For voiceovers, I don't suspect this would be a problem, though. So let's test by banging the outside of the Isovox booth. And the stand... And hopefully that's translating through YouTube. I will have a listen in post-production. 
and doing a voice test again. Free drum loops at edthorn.com. Free drum loops at edthorn.com. The difference between inside and outside the booth is astonishing. It's so dead in here. It sounds really good. So I'm really interested to hear how these two microphones sound in the same dead environment. And now I've got the Jay-Z V67 on, and you'll notice I'm quite a bit closer to the camera. That's because the way the Jay-Z mic is built means it's not particularly versatile or flexible in terms of positioning. So it's an upright microphone, so it's right at the back of the Isovox booth. Now I'm trying to do my uh, proximity measurement, but I'm struggling to get much closer than this. So hopefully that's not a factor. Let's do the noise test again, because I know this mic is sensitive to vibrations. That's the outside and the stand. Let's do a voice test. Free drum loops at edthorn.com. And just so you can see how I've got that set up, the Jay-Z microphone is on the stand there, right at the back. I've got the k and pop shield in front, inside lights, GoPro, and my iPhone for lighting. To demonstrate the ISOVOX solution, I've recorded a short song through the ISO mic inside the ISOVOX booth. And then for comparison purposes, I've recorded the same audio through my usual recording microphone, the Jay-Z V67 again, outside of the booth in a less controlled environment. We're then going to listen to the vocal parts in the context of a full mix to see how they translate into a full mix. My friend Jez Davies has played the keyboards on this track. Excuse some of the lyrics, I threw this together pretty quickly. So here in Logic, you can see the two audio waveforms from both recordings, and I think you'll agree they are pretty close in terms of gain structure there. They're virtually identical. Any difference in peaks and troughs, I would say, are performance differentials. There's no processing other than a tiny bit of auto-tuning for your listening comfort. And together we'll fight on through to the other side Of the tears you cried to find yourself a better life so don't lay down your arms yet, yeah, just take a little time, cause this world needs you. As you can hear, it's a very dry, it's a very clear recording. The microphone's picking up loads of wonderful detail, and there's no external reflections or influences on the sound. And together we'll fight on through to the other side. Of the tears you cried to find yourself a better life So don't lay down your arms yet, yeah, just take a little time Cause this world needs you Now in between the vocal phrases there, you can hear if you turn up, you might need to turn up the volume on YouTube, but you can hear there is a resonance. The drum kit was uh, behind the microphone, that's resonating. There were drums on the wall behind me, they're resonating as well. And this is all getting picked up by the microphone. And this is what we ideally want to avoid for a really dry, easy to edit and easy to mix vocal. So the ISO Vox booth really does work in terms of isolating recordings. Before we listen to the audio examples, I wanted to show you a close-up zoom in of the audio files just to see if there's a difference between the golden drop cylindrical capsule of the Jay-Z mic below here and the triangular shaped ISO mic diaphragm up here. Now I've zoomed in quite far, I've enlarged the audio uh, to make it ob pretty obvious what we're looking at and that's about as close in as I can get. Now you can see that there's a lot of smaller peaks and troughs within both audio forms. It's a little bit more forgiving on the ISO box mic, ISO mic, it looks a little bit smoother. Now I've asked a bunch of people why there would be a difference and other than capsule response, I can't, nobody can really tell me. If you have any ideas what might be causing the difference in how it looks at least, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Obviously the more important thing is how it's going to sound as we're going to find out in a minute. These were recorded at 192 kilohertz to get the maximum sample rate through my Antelope Zen Go audio interface of which there's a full review in the description below. There is a light Inside your darkness And if you listen close it'll guide you on your way We all hurt sometimes in this world But I got a feeling silver linings are coming your way And together we'll fight on through to the other side but the tears you cried to find yourself a better life 
So don't lay down your arms yet Just take a little time Cause this world needs you But I need you more and if you're wondering what processing I had on the vocals there, a uh, tiny bit of auto-tune for your listening comfort. That's the Antares. That's a really good one. Uh, an 1176 compressor, an LA-2A compressor, and the Marg EQ. And just to show you that the Marg EQs were the same on both channels, there we have it. Identical EQ, yet still, as you can hear, there's a bit more low mids, kind of low resonance on the ISO mic, um, but the Jay-Z mic seems to sit a little nicer in the mix, but that's just because it's got this character that I rave about with this microphone. Um, other than that, in terms of clarity and detail, I would say they're both very comparable to a U87. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. All right, so I've used the Isovox booth and microphone on a couple of projects and in a couple of videos now. And what are my thoughts? Firstly, it's quite big, but it's also very lightweight and it's easy to pack down, which makes it useful and portable. Primarily, it sounds good, which is the fundamental use of this uh, booth. It really does create a dead environment for recording vocals, which is ideal. The only problems I was still having was a little bit of click bleed, as you could uh, maybe hear, and headphone bleed, as you could maybe hear in the audio examples there. But in terms, in, in the comparison, recording in the booth and outside the booth with the other microphone, you know, it's night and day in terms of the room reflections and the resonance, it really does do exactly what it says on the tin. Other practicalities are the light inside is really nice. I can fit an iPad in there and an A4 piece of paper for reading lyrics and notes and things. Uh, it does get quite warm, but you can obviously step in and out. And usually in the UK, this isn't a problem. It just so happened that I was demoing this on the hottest week of the year. The stand that comes with the ISO booth is very secure. The only minor issue I had was the pegs in the stand couldn't quite get it to the right height, so I had to have it somewhere in between, which just meant screwing the bolt up a little bit tighter, minor detail. And like I said in the video, I think I had to change my style to singing, because as you saw when I'm on the Jay-Z mic, I am moving around quite a bit. I had to be a bit more restrained in the booth, otherwise I would knock it and that would send vibration through the microphone. But actually the ISO mic is very well isolated and didn't pick up as much of this as my other microphone did. In terms of how the ISO mic sounds, it's incredibly clear and detailed. Like I said earlier, it is comparable to a U87 in terms of those details. I think it's better for voice recordings just because it's such a sensitive microphone. When I was recording the vocals, I had it at maybe five or eight decibels of input gain. And when I was projecting, I felt like it was possibly too sensitive for me. And I, I, I'm a reasonably loud singer. I know metal singers who are louder, but for, me, for most people, I think it's gonna be okay okay in terms of a vocal mic. If you like the sound of it, which is the most important thing, amazing. And I think for voiceover artists, it's a good microphone. It's clear, it's detailed, it's smooth, and it's lightweight, and it's very easy to set up in the booth. As an all-in-one solution, yes, it's quite expensive. The microphone is expensive, but then you pay that amount of money for that kind of quality. The booth is expensive, but it's gonna save you loads of money on acoustic treatment. And I'm gonna be using this in my bedroom at home, where I used to have loads of acoustic foam, which quite frankly just looked ugly and meant I could never switch off from work. So this is gonna be a great solution because I've taken all that foam down so I now have my bedroom back. There's a link for that studio reveal video in the description by the way and I can set this up quickly when I want to track some vocals and it's going to have the acoustic isolating effect that I need and I want in that room. I should have maybe recorded this entire video in my old bedroom because the acoustics in there are rubbish uh, but it was just more practical to do it here. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you're considering buying this, what your thoughts are on the audio, which microphone you preferred, whether you think it's something you'd get a lot of use out or not, or if you have any alternatives that you're using for yourself. I'd love to hear from you guys, so let me know in the comments. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. My name's Ed, and I'll see you all on the next video.